Hello and welcome guys. Um, I hope you're enjoying the 25 hours live stream that I'm playing right now. Strange thing is, I'm talking right now, yet I'm doing something that I'm not doing. So okay, anyway, um, this is recorded. Yep, this segment is recorded. The wonderful Emily, he couldn't make it to the stream live. So what she did was, she told me that she can come on for a recorded interview. So if you notice a few days ago, I asked you guys to send me questions if you want Emily Heat to answer them. And they're answered now. So anyway, um, hello Emily, how are you? Hello! I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on my 25 hour stream. Oh my, that is so long. Oh, I'm, I'm not even playing the game right now and I'm derping. Oh God. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, Norman. You're doing fine. Oh, yes. And people, for people who are wondering, who's that voice? It was me. I'm that good. It was me. <laughs> yes, Annalie Heat played the role of I James wish. Cork. <laughs> Annalie Heat is my voice actor. Yeah. She, she does my voice when I'm not available. I can live dub you. Who do I mean, just now? That's so awesome. So anyway, Annalie, how are you? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I couldn't make it on the live stream, so I couldn't miss this for the world. That's why I asked, please, can we record it? And you said, yeah, and that was good. Yeah, that's awesome because talking to you is a blast. And, well, what am I doing in the game right now? That's the wrong move. Move to the right. Oh, you. That would be so strange if it didn't happen. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> um, you silly filly. I know. I'm trying to interact with my future self that I don't see myself. Well, I always do that, <laughs> but with my future self, not yours. Well, you could mock me for losing at a game. Do it. Maybe you match up. <laughs> oh, you lost the game. Oh, why did you do that? That was just bad. You're a bad gamey pony. <laughs> and then one would have been like, you win. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> I hope that matches. Seriously, I hope that matches. People will think that this is live and stuff, but no. Oh, how, you're, how are you pressing the buttons with our thumbs? What is that sorcery? Ooh, you, can <laughs> you can wear mittens so you won't get your your, your thumbs. You can get. I used to do that when I was gaming a lot. Oh, really? Yes. Use mittens to play the game? What game were you playing? Oh, this was a couple of years ago. Um, I was playing, I mean, I was a kid. Uh, it was like Super Mario and on the Nintendo and stuff mm. like that. And uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, Nintendo always have the nice, um, fun games, like family-friendly and kid-friendly and well, just fun all around. Yeah. But I used to play Killer Instinct as well, so. <laughs> oh, Killer Instinct. <laughs> Killer Instinct is fun. I still have my 8-bit Nintendo and my Super Nintendo. I can never get rid of those. They're in my living room. They're indestructible. They, yeah. After years, they still work. Not like the new yeah. Fandango machines. I had the new ones oh. also. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 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 I don't think so, because my Nintendo 64 is broken, and so is my GameCube. So maybe I'm just terrible with consoles. No, there's a problem, because you're running the new generation. The old generation is like the NES and the SNES. Ah, old school, yeah. You know, I never had a Super Nintendo. Never. I have a Game Boy, but not a Super Nintendo. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I, I remember... Um, I, I don't have a Super Nintendo. But I have a Super Famicom. It's a Japanese version of the Nintendo. And... Was the game limited? Oh my! <laughs> yeah, but still, but still. So, Emily, um, how has the show been doing for you? Any new things that have been recorded lately that you can share? Nothing regarding the ponies except the Questra Girls. Oh, that was aired uh, three weeks ago on Nickelodeon in Sweden. Mm. So that was a lot of fun, and I got to sing. That the director he told me that I sing like ninety percent of all of the things, <laughs> all of the singing in the in the movie. So I was like, woohoo! I had eight hours oh. of just singing. And then, like, two hours for my characters talking. Oh, my. Um, who did you play in the movie? Oh, I was my usual characters. I was Spike and Sweetie Belle and Cheryl Lee and the Rainbow Duchess singing voices sometimes. And sometimes she actually sings herself This, in this movie. And mm. then I did all the harmonies. Sometimes there were, like, eight harmonies at the same time. I mean, Daniel Ingram, he's just fantastic with the music. It was so much fun. Oh, wow. Hmm. You, you did a lot of roles. And, well, I, I kind of forget that you do most of the roles, Spike and Sweetie Belle and Cheerilee. I, I kind of forgot them. My goodness, how how could I forget? Mm. 
How could you forget? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what is the song that is still hasn't left your your head? It's like, are you like still humming any of the um, tunes, like um, the cafeteria yes. song? <laughs> yeah, I totally do that, and I always mix them up because I mix Swedish with the English because some of the English words I remember, uh, and some of the Swedish words. So it's the cafe song in Sweden is uh, <clears throat> something like. Um, Hop up, up, hey, hey, stampa fett, pirouette, börja att nå ut, gör ett lyckligt slut. Something like that. Well, wow. even in Swedish, it sounds good. I was rocking to that, actually. <laughs> and there was, there was, oh, um, the other songs. There were so good songs in that movie. It was, um, uh, Viken Konstivet, försöker att, na, na, pa, försöker så att passa in i en konstivet, Viken Konstivet. That's the end credit, right? Uh, hmm? Yeah, that is the end credits. The movie was supposed to be a, a TV released in America, but they released it in theaters. And then yeah. when they released it in when they released it in TV, they had to cut some scenes out because they were uh, way too long. Like the the length was way too long for what uh, television is uh, allows in in America. Did, oh. Do you know if they had to do the same in well, in Sweden? What was the scenes? What was edited out? <laughs> Oh, uh, there was a song where Twilight is singing about uh, how strange everything is and how everything is new. Uh, oh, that, that is one that's scene the song with... that I just sang. Oh, that, that was in oh. there. Yes. Oh, what and then, new there world. Was a, mm. then there was a scene where uh, the great and powerful Trixie shows up only to get some peanut butter crackers. Yes, she wants crackers. Yeah, that's also in the Swedish version. Oh, so I'm guessing everything is there then. It's Yeah, yeah but because then they, they also have oh, a actually, scene where... Uh, where Chirley and the Cutie Mark Crusaders are uh, watching a video on YouTube in the in the no, that's there, library. So I voiced that, wow. so that's there. But actually, they didn't play the the ending song, "A True True Friend," Ooh. so they they took that away, and that was too bad because I'm singing by myself on that song, and I said in the studio, "They're gonna Nickelodeon is gonna like bam, just go to commercial." <laughs> and they was like, "No, they're not gonna. They wouldn't ask us to record this," and then they did. So I was like, "Aw." I really want to hear that song. I really want to hear how I did. Well, you could just pretend. You could just sing it all over again. You can just sing it all over again. <laughs> yeah, I can just sing it for myself. <laughs> like, oh, that was good. <laughs> well, personally, I think this is good. Okay. No, let's post it on the internet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. I hope it's going to be released on DVD and that I can get it. So uh, It's quite likely going to be released on DVD. Uh, the, it's already out in America. And if, if things go the same route as they go in Europe, it's going to take a year for it to arrive in, in Euro- Europe. Yeah. It's, we still haven't re- received the Friendship Express DVD that came with uh, the Derpy episode here in Europe. It's still in America only, so uh, we'll just have to wait. You say you, uh, that Nickelodeon is airing the movie. Are they also the ones like directing the dub and uh, giving the the voice actors directions, or are they just like releasing the the the, uh, the, the cartoon? Nickelodeon is just releasing the cartoon. So mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, in that case, you work with the uh, your usual uh, the typical studio. Uh, dub studio. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's yeah, the so, people we see. Uh, how how is it working over there? Because we hear stories of all the BAs talking about how it is uh, uh, their experience uh, over there in, in America or Canada. They, they do they do the voice acting in Canada, but we, we don't hear much of the voice actors here in Europe. Um, how is it? It's actually it's not the same as you do in let's say Canada because there you are with your co coworkers in the same room. But in Sweden we're we're by ourselves in a room and we have our director or uh, sound engineer outside the room and uh, we work together with them. So we act towards the recorded things. And then you can choose if you want to re- if you want to act to the Swedish cast or the uh, Canadian slash English cast. Hmm. I guess I guess it has to be kind of like um, weird because you are dubbing over someone, uh, uh, you are dubbing over the cartoon. While in their case, they are doing the voice, but the cartoon hasn't been hasn't been made yet. Uh, so they need a lot a lot of direction to give a, a more accurate performance. While you guys, you already have the the cartoon there. I mean, you know what the characters look like. Is it like an? Is it like easier? To see the cartoon happen, and you are like, okay, the character looks like this. It must feel like this. It it sounds similar to this. Or, or uh, is it better to have 
no idea of what the cartoon looks like, and then do the voice from scratch? Well, it depends, because when you do preli animation, uh, which is called when you... When it's when you record the sound before the drawing starts, you always you have the, the picture of the character and you get so much information from the producer, so you know what to do, and that gives you a lot of freedom. But if you're dubbing something, it's not the same freedom because you have to get in on a certain time code and then you have to get out on a certain time code. And while you're doing it, you have to make it your own character and do it in the Swedish melody so you don't copy the English melody because that's not good at all. Uh, but then it sounds really dubbed and you don't, you don't want it to sound dubbed. You want it to sound natural, like people speak in real life. That's the difference. My answer is it's harder but easier, but easier but harder. So like like every other uh, like every other job, it, it has its advantages and its disadvantages. Yes. I'm watching. I'm currently watching the Japanese dub, and the Japanese dub looks so fitting. Like I, I can just imagine what's going through their head. Like they need to make the sound almost like the American counterpart, but they can't really do hundred percent. But they need to make it their own. Mm. I, I can imagine what you're going through. Um. Oh no. Go ahead, Norman. I have asked a lot of stuff already. <laughs> Oh, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Okay. Um, so I got a question from Facebook. Uh, somebody by the name of Jeffrey Go. He asked, "How Hi, does?" Hi, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, I hope you're listening to this, Jeffrey. Um, how does she got her role as a voice actress? I really want to know that. Okay. Um, well, I started off as uh, I'm a comedian and an impersonator, so I do a lot of voices on stage while I'm performing my comedy. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I got asked if I wanted to do cartoon voices, and I said, yes, I want to do that. So I went to the studio, and I did a test, and then I just kept on doing what I'm doing. And I really wanted to do this since I was a little girl, so I kind of had been waiting for them to, to call me. <laughs> And people always said to me, you should do cartoon voices. And I said, nah, no, nah, I don't know. And then when I got the question, there were no no hesitation. <laughs> you were that type of little girl who was like, I want to be a cartoon when I grow up. <laughs> yes. I didn't want to be a princess. If it, if we, <laughs> I wanted to be a, a cartoon princess, not a princess. You are like Lee Toker. Lee Toker, who does the, he does the voice of Stephen Magnet and yeah, Snips. Know. Yeah, he, he also was like that. He was like, when he was talking to his mother, he said that he wanted to be a cartoon when he grew, grew up. That's wonderful. Being able to follow your dreams and, and accomplish yeah. them. It, 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 it's beautiful. It's really cool because I had these old cassettes when I'm trying to, I mean, I, I, I read every line in The Little Mermaid. I recorded that one with different voices and I was really thorough to to credit myself after that one saying my name after every character. <laughs> and I have a lot of tapes when I'm doing voices and stuff like that. And it's so fun to hear to hear my eight-year-old self sitting and saying all those things on the tapes. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You still have those tapes? You still have yes, those tapes? Oh yeah. my god, that's so awesome. <laughs> I sound so sweet. So sweet and innocent. <laughs> oh my. No, I'm not, no. <laughs> oh, you are. You I'm are. pretty sure you do. I'm pretty sure you do. <laughs> so here's another interesting one. Uh, Winston Ong, he asks, how did you get your role as Spitfire? Well, since it's a minor character in the show, I didn't have to do a voice test for it. So it just showed up there in my lines, just... Between Spike and Sweet Bell or something like that. And, um, and, uh, I was like, ooh, a new pony! And they said, yep. And I had to listen to her and I thought, okay, this is how I'm gonna do it. And then I did it. And mm. they said, good. And then we did the next one. So <laughs> I didn't have time to, I mean, I didn't know anything about her. It was just like, yeah, I was in the middle of a session. Oh, so it's basically list of ponies. Hey, you want to do this? Yeah, sure, why not? And then. No, done. they never ask you. The funny thing is, they never ask you if you want to do it. They're just, they're just like, okay, and now now you're going to do this one. And now it's this one. And now back to that one, okay? Now you have, you're going to do today, we're going to have you do this for us and this and this. And I'm like, okay, okay, sure. <laughs> so they never ask if you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so the so funny thing is um, people know you for Swedish Spitfire. So it's like a, a minor role that you just accidentally got and you make it your own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, funny thing, it's just really appeared cool. three times in no two times in season one, once in season two, and a whole episode dedicated to her in season three. So like, yeah. oh my, yeah, yeah, That's really cool. yeah. 
did you get to meet the the voice actress who does the the English voice of uh, Spitfire? No, but we had say uh, said hello on Twitter a couple of times. <laughs> she is like, she's lovely. Yeah? yeah, she seems really yeah, nice. She... And and um, I mean, at Galacom this summer, me and Andrea Lidman we did uh, the Fluttershy cute off. <laughs> so if I ever get to meet oh Kelly Metzger, we could do like the Spitfire cute off or cool <laughs> off or something like that because they're cool <laughs> girls. Okay. Okay, yeah, you have to, could. you have to try. Yeah, you have to try and say who 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 says in the most badass way. That's an academy record. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> Make it happen. It should. It, it it has to happen. Yeah, those two worlds need to collide. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I have a question regarding the fandom. Uh, I I have it here in the list of questions that I had. Out of all the fan art and out of all the things that we have produced that uh, you might have seen, what do you think is your favorite or the one that caught your attention the most? Um, it's really hard to choose between the music and the art because I really like both of them, and um, so I'll I'll have to say both of them: music and art. Mm, okay. Music and art. Any any particular piece of art or any particular piece of music or mm. is just yeah, in general? There, there is um, there is an artist from Finland who does this really you know oil paintings with Fluttershy's house and stuff like that. It's really amazing. And of course, I love the lovely John Joseko and oh, there's so many uh, Rautakova and um, well. There, there's a lot of them, and the music, <laughs> of course, there's a lot of them. There's Eurobeat Brony that I met on Dirt Pecan South, and, of course, Cyril the Wolf. Yeah, there, there's a lot of them. Mm. I know Cyril. Cyril is, Cyril is an awesome guy. And He's funny. It is, it, is, it is difficult to pick one piece of... Now I think my question was a bit unfair, because <laughs> the amount of, of artwork and the quality of it that this fandom produces is... Mm so huge that it's difficult to pick one uh, one picture in particular so i completely understand where you yeah. where you're coming from and then of course the, the, the figurines i mean the the little sculptures uh, and the plushies i mean there there's so oh many God, things so many great things in the standards i mean i can never choose one it's like no <laughs> It's like asking the... who's best pony. You can never answer who's best pony, <laughs> or can you? Oh, regarding that, who is best pony in your opinion? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, who's best pony, James? Uh, personally, I always go for Rarity. I love Rarity. She's Because she's the one that, that feels the most like me, because she's artistic, she's generous, and she's always pretty worried about people's opinions on their uh, craft. And if people don't like it, or if she doesn't feel happy about it, she kind of, like, gets sad. But to be honest with you, if I have to answer the question of... But but objectively so, uh, objectively so, this this, uh, this show has so many different characters. And they are all so different in both the way they look, the way they speak, and the way they act. In their personalities that everyone can be the best pony. Everyone ca- can be the best for everybody. Best pony. Yes. So, yeah, when people ask me, it's like, I love rarity, but every pony is best pony. So, Norman, who's well, best uh, pony? I take it over the show. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> this sounds, oh, no. This sounds so natural because I'm concentrating on the game and you're turning the tables on me. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the Thank MBS you. show, Anali. Welcome oh, to yeah, the yeah, MBS show, the Anali Heat Edition. Show. My name is Anali Heat, and I'm here to talk with you. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. I would love to have my own show. That would be cool. Like, Realme of the Week or something. I'll watch it. People will come. I don't mind editing that for you. (laughs) Well, you know, uh, know, there is uh, is this voice actor. I think it's, um, uh, what's the name of the voice actor who did the voice of Jacko in Animaniacs? I I know. uh, uh, Paulson, Rob Paulson. Po- Rob Paulson has a podcast where he brings other voice actors and they talk about both the industry, what's going on in the news, and then they have a silly uh, interview segment towards the end. So, hey, if Rob Paulson can do it, so can you, Anali. Yeah. So true. I-, I bet every brony station out there is willing to pick you up and promote you. <laughs> that would be that would be kind of cool, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here first, think about that. come to my show. I, w- I will host you. <laughs> no, Norman, now please answer... 
What's your favorite pony? Oh, I thought you forgot. <laughs> okay. Um, ah, no. <laughs> okay. Nene. Here's an interesting one. Um, like Dan always say, there's multiple choices. And for me, out of the main six, I love Fluttershy the most. Because she's so cute and shy and she's kind of... Yay. Yay. No, but... Um, I can I, hear I, your heart melting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Um, and it's kind of like, I don't know, I used to be that kind of person before. Now, I think it reflects back. Like, when I see Fluttershy, I can see a bit of me in her. Aww. But just for the fun of it, I like Derpy more. Hmm. Fun fact, uh, Derpy is the mascot for the MBS show. Is she now? <laughs> yep, that's why anytime there's a malfunction, she's it's her fault. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yep. Well, I just um, don't know what went wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, um, here's a question from uh, Facebook again. A person called Nick Amir. He asked her reaction to bronies. How did she discover bronies? Where does she... I think it's what. What does she think? Um, what does eh? she think she stand in Swedish brony community? Favorite pony is Spitfire, relatable. Oh, I'm just going to copy paste this in the chat because <laughs> I okay. If I if I am if I am to word the question properly, is like what will be your impression on the brownie community in Sweden and uh, of the brownie community in general? Like what what do you think of us? Well, um, in Sweden there are like I think there's like a thousand of them or something. There was supposed to be a convention here, but it didn't fall through. And it was really sad because I was so looking forward to meet everyone. Um, but I'm really crossing my fingers that it will happen some other time. Uh, and then the rest of the brony community, well, I met I met European bronies at Galacom 2012 and 2013 this summer. And then I met some American bronies also uh, this, yeah, two weeks ago mm. in New Orleans. Uh, at Derpicon South. So I met, I met a fair share of bronies, I think. And it just makes me want to meet even more. Because I always get really happy when I'm around, around you bronies. Because I mean, the whole, um, oh, what's the word in English? Um, the whole, the whole mood in the, in the, in the area just changes. There's so much energy and love and just good things, good feelings out there. And it really gets you into it. Mm, true. Huh. Like, you haven't met any Asian bronies yet, so, you know, there's Never. a conversation happening soon, so, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> well, nudging and winking back. <laughs> <laughs> to kind of uh, segue from, uh, the, from the question regarding bronies, uh, if you could ask something to us, like, if you were curious about something about us, what would that be? And maybe we will, we both, we don't speak for the entire community, of course, but we might be able to, like, give a proper answer as much as we can. Yeah, I'm really interested in knowing, like, each and everyone's story behind how they became a brownie and how they discovered the show. Because, I, I mean, everyone has different stories, and it's really interesting to hear that. Mm, yeah, that, that is a good is question. True. That is a good question. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it will be it will be like going through every single brony and asking them yeah. why you became a fan of the show. It will be my mission. Well, I've already done <laughs> eighty five episodes of that, so <laughs> no. But um, me asking that question every week to the people that I interview, and it's never the same. No, it can never be the same. Everyone is individual, so there is a same thing here and there, like okay, bits of pieces that you can um, kind of tell that they're almost the same, but in reality, they're really not. Um, James, why don't you go first? Because I think your system was <laughs> interesting. Well, uh, yeah, I, I'll tell you, but I think that the bits and pieces uh, you um, you referred to is that I think everyone's reactions is the same. We are like, oh God, I'm not going to watch a show by, for little girls. Wait a minute, this is a show for little girls. It's actually really good. Oh my God, why do I like this show? Oh my God, I love this show. I think that's... That's kind of like the stage of uh, becoming one. Um, <laughs> but when when it uh, comes to me finding this show, uh, it was early 2011. I had lost my job in uh, December 25, 2010. Lost my job in Christmas. How fun Aww. is that? Aww. And I was really sad and very depressed. So I 
uh, one of my friends came in and he's like, uh, he spent like three weeks prior to that telling me to get into, into Friendship is Magic, watch the show because it's really good. And I kept saying, no, I'm not interested. I'm not into that kind of stuff. So I finally gave in because I needed something cartoony and something animated to cheer me up. So I watched one episode, then two, then five, then up until episode 16, which was the newest one of uh, season one, and I just fell in love with it. It cheered me up. It motivated me. I went up and got my graphic designs degree, and uh, uh, now I'm now I'm doing graphic design. I think it's if it hadn't been for that show pulling me out of the dumps, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And right now I am very good. <laughs> Great. That, that is fantastic. That's awesome. It is. And that yeah. is that is just that is just one story and mine is nothing compared to other to other people who have been motivated to uh, like uh, quit drugs or quit drinking or uh, make comments with their families or join the military to help out or just motivate but by, by this this cartoon. Uh the key word to describe friendship is magic is inspirational. That's good, that's good. Um uh, I can't add anything more because my story is lame. <laughs> no, no oh, story is lame. Come on. Tell no. us, tell us, Norman. I want to hear it. Okay. Yeah, um, I want to I, I I mean, hear it too because I don't only, know about it either. If it's only like I saw the show and I liked it, it's not lame at all because you like the show. And I mean, so it can never be lame. Come on. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and see what I can do because my story here may be jumbled because my memory is not that good like James. But um, the thing is, in early to, no, I mean, mid-2011, like, October 10, when the show came out, I, I heard sparks coming out, like, this show is here and there, and back then, oh, well, I'm still am on Divine Art, and I was kind of looking through stuff. Some of the people I subscribe to post pictures of the ponies, and I was a bit confused, like, huh, okay, ponies, what's this? Huh, art looks good, interesting, okay, ignore. Because back then, I was a man. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, um, on later, I kept, I just kept seeing ponies being posted and stuff. And like, oh, what is this? Why are they here and there? And I think the one of the things that got me, got my attention was looking at a website called Can Know You Mean. So, I was browsing through and I saw the post on My Little Pony. I took a good read and look at what they had to say about it. And you know what? Okay, since you guys made a post on this, I'm just going to try and look at the episode. They had a link. I click on the link. I watched the first episode. In my mind, I was only saying that, oh, okay, this, just going to judge it by one episode. If it's good, yeah, it's good. But if it's bad, you know what? I wasn't expecting much. So I watched the first episode and it was interesting. It was interesting. And when it came to the end of episode one, season one, I was like, oh, you people, you, you're smart. You're asking me to watch another one because I must know the conclusion. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So I watched the second episode. I was surprised when Pinkie Pie sang and Twilight said, no, she's not. You remember the part where you giggled at the ghostly? Um, yeah. Yeah, that part. So because, the beginning of the show, yeah. Yeah. Because that part, it was kind of, hey, I'm thinking the same thing. She's also thinking the same thing. This is awesome. <laughs> and then I just kept go watching because I want to know. Um, end of part two. Okay, it's awesome, but oh, it can't, they can't repeat it again. Went to episode three. What caught my attention was they played the Benny Hill theme, but they modded it for their own style. So, yeah. okay, that's okay. Now, the fourth episode got to be bad until episode um, 16 or I don't really remember what was Sweetie Belle no um, they, they sang a song for that was episode show. 18 yeah yeah, yeah I, I watched till episode 18 and then like okay you know what this show is good I'm gonna continue watching it <laughs> after 18 episodes yeah yeah but it's still like, it caught me I, I I was slowly looking into it and slowly looking because I wasn't sure what I was feeling did I enjoy this? Yeah, I do. But I watch another. I watch all kind of anime or cartoons back then. So like, yeah. But what got me really interested was how good the art was, how good the music, how just basically the community. I can say that the reason why I'm doing this 25 hour stream is the community is awesome and they're really generous. Yeah. 
This community is amazing. It true, is. True. Doesn't get old. Uh, I I came up with a question on on, on the fly, uh, going back to uh, voice acting and your work on on the show, uh, because uh, okay, you do voice Fluttershy on the Swedish dub. No, I don't. I wish no? I did. Oh, oh okay. No. For a moment, I think did. Oh, oh, oh I completely no. heard the question there. Oh, God. But the one in Sweden uh. is doing it. She's doing a really good job. So I mean, but I would like to do it. <laughs> but no. Okay. okay. Any well, impressions in- of her? <laughs> oh, but I, I can, I can uh, reward my question then. Uh, out of all the moments that uh, you had to voice. What is your favorite uh, that you can talk about, of course, that hasn't been aired yet? Mm, there's a couple of them that I want to talk about, but I can't. <laughs> but oh. I'm. Um, <laughs> but uh, does it have to be regarding the ponies or or everything? Uh, you know what? We have been focused on on MLP. We can make it now everything because okay. it's like a, a broader. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, this is actually kind of related to the ponies. It's a little less patch up. Ooh. Oh yeah. my god, awesome. Yeah, so, uh, and it started, it started to air, um, two weeks ago. So now I can finally talk about it. So I'm doing, I'm voicing the Biscuit Twins. What? <laughs> <laughs> I know they are wild, cause they're so funny. And I mean, when I voice them, I have so much fun, cause I get to be really obnoxious, <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> I am so surprised. I, this is really awesome. And I can do so all of the voice- sounds, like <laughs> something like that, you know, in the beginning of sentences. I love it. And you voice both of them. <laughs> oh yes, I do. <laughs> oh my god! And it's like when you voice it, when you voice them, do you do you have to go back and forth in one take, or do you just do one of the voices and then you do the other? On, on um, to the I do one, and then we take the other one. So first okay. I voice Britney, and then I voice Whitney. So, yeah. it, could, it could have been a, it would have been a bit crazy to just go on the uh, change voices as you're as you're doing the conversation. It would be like talking to yourself, literally. Yeah, but I'm kind of used to that <laughs> because uh, that sounds funny. No, but I I I am um, in a lot of shows. I do a lot of characters that speak to each other, so I do different voices, and I'm really used to to talking to myself in the dubbing. So I'm like, oh well, okay. <laughs> so this is yeah. But since this is the same voice, it's kind of confusing when I'm going in, when I hear myself ending a sentence and I know I'm going, I'm going to go right in there. And at first I think, oh, wait. And then, oh, okay. So that's kind of confusing uh, because it's the exact same voice I use on them. So that's... (laughs) But that's interesting (laughs) when you're playing twins. Yeah. And I I used to, I'm uh, in one episode in Kid vs. Cat, uh, when I was, I was the main character Coop. Uh, and in one episode, he was like, he made copies of, of himself. Uh, so he was like, I think I was three or four little Coops talking to each other. That was really. <laughs> That's going to be uh, confusing. In, that like... was confusing. But it was also a lot of fun. Those episodes are the best. Yeah, true. The the more that you challenge yourself, the more it's yeah, fun. Yeah, it is a challenge. Yeah, the more exactly. And I also do a couple of others in Little Pet Shop, but oh. I don't want to spoil things. So, oh, okay. so it yeah. just aired? In... Yeah, it just started to air. Yeah. So how, how's that been doing for you? Like, um, How's the reaction? Were they excited got, about it? I haven't got any reaction at all from Sweden. So I'm really, mm. oh, I want to hear what they think about the show. I want to hear what they think about the work we do. And, and I really want to hear it. So, sweets, come on, watch little, little Spetch Up on Nickelodeon at, I mean, the time is 8.50 um, a.m. So I think people are at work or in school. So I think they miss it. But I watch it every day. <laughs> I, I actually watch it because, I, I mean, I really... I really want to to see how how I did, and I think I want to see more of the show because I have seen a little bit of the English version. So I really want to see how how we did back home. I have to <laughs> say I, I do enjoy this the special shop. Like that show is people say yeah, it's just a carbon copy of ponies. They're trying to capitalize on ponies and stuff. I say nay because that show has its own personality. Even though most of the voice crew are from the same sh- show as the ponies. They make yes. it their own. Yeah. yeah. They also have some of the same writers. Uh, M.A. Larson wrote a couple of episodes for uh, 
a Little Sped Shop, as well as Charlotte Fullerton and uh, Nicole Oliver, the, one, the voice actress who does the voice of uh, Princess Celestia and Cheerly in the English dub. Yeah. She's, She's the voice Zoe of yeah. Zoe Trent. Yeah. And here's a fun yeah, fact. Uh, um, said Tabitha St. Germain, she plays the skunk. Um, she is uh, Pepper Clark. Yeah, and uh, yeah. the one who voices uh, Brittany Whitney Biscuit, they, uh, it's the same girl that sings for Pinkie Pie. Yep, Shannon Kent. Yes. So, so you know, I, the way, I know things. Need to see the show. <laughs> I keep up. <laughs> Yay. People, people, need to, Yay. people need to go and check that show out because um, the, the way I see it is like... Uh, if you remember Happy Tree, Happy Tree Friends, which oh, was nice. this, yeah, Happy Tree Friends, it has the animation of Happy Tree Friends with the writing of Friendship is Magic. It's a good combination. The little I saw of it, I want to watch more of it. I didn't watch enough. I, I want to find all the episodes online and, and check them because, again, I think that's, that's the bane of our existence here in Europe. We have to watch the episodes online because they haven't released them yet. When well, James, there's Amazon. There's Amazon. <laughs> Yeah, no, but you see, that's the other thing. The Amazon store uh, doesn't include the seasons oh. for 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 Europe. All the seasons, uh, all the all the DVDs of uh, MLP and Little Pet Shop that are on Amazon, they are all in TSC format. They don't allow you to play them in in Europe. That sucks. That sucks. You know what? Get the no. The Blu-ray doesn't work. Damn. Uh. Blu- Blu-rays and the radio, uh, I, I just don't know what went wrong with that because you want money, don't you, um, movie producer company, but you don't want to release it everywhere. So it's like, ah. Um, I have another question for Anali. Uh, it's like the last one that I have here on on, uh, on the on the list. Um, there are a lot of, uh, this is regarding awards and uh, winning awards for, for your work. Like, of course, it, winning an award for doing something, that's a, a good a, a good addition, a good extra. But there are many mainstream awards, like the Oscars or the Golden Globes, that they do, they award acting, but they never, they, the Oscars in particular, they have never, ever even nominated a voice actor for uh, for an acting performance. Never in their history. Um what do, what do you think about that? Because I think that is really unfair, and it goes to the whole uh, argument that people think voice acting is not acting, which I think it's bullcrap. But oh, what do yes. you think about it? Um, I think that they should have their own gala event for the voice actors, and they should should give out prizes to, to the ones they think are the best ones in each category. Best male, best female, best newcomer, best foreign, something like that. I think totally, yeah. I think that people is a would great, be interested that is a great idea. That. In, in Canada, yeah. they're doing something like that, but for their local team only. Like, they're giving awards. I don't remember what was it called, but I did a report on it a while back. Like, they're, it's kind of a award show for the voice crew of Canada saying, oh, this person voiced this, like, he wins an award, and go do something. Like, I don't remember what the award's called. That sounds nice. True. Yeah. But if you think about it, it's like, oh, it's only for Can- Canadians. Yeah. Yeah. But it, we need something. Yeah, true. We don't true. have anything. <laughs> we should have in Sweden. <laughs> well, you know how... You know how sometimes it is. Here in Spain, we have our own movie awards, and it's kind of funny because it's getting to the point that we only have four movies every year. <laughs> so it's the same four movies in every single category oh, over and over again. Yeah, that is Sweden as well, but it's a little bit bigger than four, <laughs> but we have kind of a small. <laughs> no, it's not that small, but but it's, um, it's funny because it's, it's the same people in there. <laughs> No, I think it's, it's everywhere, really, because over yeah. here in Malaysia, we have that award show, too. But instead of look, uh, concentrating on the movies, we take movies, we take um, TV series. I, I think, I don't think we have the movies, but it's for TV series, like best actor, best drama, best comedy, best whatever there is on TV. Like, they do that. And I don't pay attention because I don't really like my local media. Let's just see. We have, we have that, too. Uh like Swedish television gets Swedish produced uh, shows uh, gets uh, prices. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I I think sometimes we approach it the wrong way because the Academy Awards and the the BAFTAs, the British Academy Awards, they not only include 
movies from America or from uh, Great Britain. They include movies from all over the place, like uh, Spanish, Swedish, Japanese, uh, uh, um, Korean movies, French, Italian. They, they include all over the world, and they measure them to how good they are. If they give preference to American movies, well, the, the, they're in their home. They can do whatever they want. Uh, but I think that sometimes we approach it the wrong way. We should also include... I, I vote for including also um, other movies in uh, in the award categories, in, in in our respective awards. Like here in Spain, we should definitely do that. There are so many movies that are made with uh, Spanish money that they don't even care to nominate. It's <laughs> it's incre- incredible. Hmm. Well, hmm. It's, it's budget and um, politics when it comes to those kind of things because, you know, um, money goes around when doing movies and, you know, certain movies want to have more credit to their name. Yeah. That's right. By sure. the way, I, I, I said tracked it, sorry. Oh, no problem, no problem, man. It, it was an interesting conversation. At least we're not talking about ponies. And back to ponies. Ponies! <laughs> so, uh, anyway, no, back uh, to the subject. You know, I... Um, Notice something interesting. You keep up with the fandom or you keep up with the show like what we do. So how do you do it? <laughs> well, um, I I keep up uh, through talking a lot with you and chatting on Twitter. And it just I have a very big interest of both of the show and of you guys because I want to know everything. Mm. <laughs> I enjoy spending time with you guys. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I thank you. No, it's just that, like, certain people, certain, let's just say certain actors or certain voice actors who play certain roles, um, they don't really pay much attention to their fans or the community. For example, let's just say some guy playing a role on a TV show, he kind of plays it because it's food on the table, and when people go to him asking him stuff, and a really um, popular one that voice actors hate the most is... Oh, do you remember what line you said in this episode, in this season? <laughs> it's like, he'll, he or she will forget, like, oh, God, it's been a while. I, I, sorry, I can't remember. And then, like, those kind of things. You, when I notice, when we talk to you, it's kind of, oh, you know what we're talking about. You know yeah. this, you know that. <laughs> I mean, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> and I, I really, I mean, I have a lot of passion for for it. So, I mean, it, it really comes easy to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to know, and if I don't know, I seek up the information because if there's a joke about something, I want, oh, I want to get this joke, and then I, I read about it, ah, okay, and then I know I'm part of the joke, so I can just, you know, pass it along. <laughs> no, but, yeah. You do seem to know a lot about the show, and you know how to, uh, you, you do keep up with it. Um, how can you find time to remember all of these lines? Because it's obviously you have, uh, it's obviously you have a, uh, I'm pretty sure you have a, a quite a workload. You have work in a lot of different projects. Yes. So uh, I guess I guess the same way I I store and save my drawings because I I, I do artwork. It, it must be the same way you store and save your different voices. But that requires a lot of talent because my pictures are in my my in my computer, but the voices. This is going to sound terrible, but the voices are in your head. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you have yeah, them but, and save. But, uh, yeah, and I mean, I think it's about passion as well, because if you're really passionate about something, you just want to just like roll around in it because it's nice. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I oh, just it's cool. it's say that I really enjoy it all. Uh, now I remember what I was trying to say. Um, when, when I mentioned it was um, your knowledge of the show, is it only limited to the show or go beyond to what the fandom has built? Uh, I think it goes beyond. I, ho- I hope it does. Um, ah. I hope that you see me as it does. <laughs> oh, no, it's because we as the fandom, we have crazy ideas. Like, oh, did you know that um, Princess uh, Twilight Sparkle is dating this guy from this realm? Oh, God, no. I'm, uh, uh, it's, it's just a lot of hit cannons Let's and not stuff. go into shipping, Norman. Let's not go into shipping. No, but still, it's kind of there and certain Tumblr blogs and certain... Um, Let's just say that I know things. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know awesome. things that I know things that I that I'm that I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> like like oh, Lauren Faust, like Lauren Faust said once, uh, she's a grown up girl. When things get icky, she finds something else uh, to do to get busy <laughs> with. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's like now we are too busy to bother with that stuff. Yeah, 
It's yeah, we all are actually. In this day and age, even I am busy. I have a bunch of commissions and drawings and, and designs that I have to finish before the year ends. So even with that, I I have a I have a handful of things to do. Oh, yeah. That's true. And also, I'm playing mm-hmm. 25 hour gaming right now. So ah, <laughs> so much stuff. There's somebody on Twitter called uh, Chic927, and he asked, "Would I, I think you might have read this, but I'm just going to ask." Would she like to, or basically, would you like to cosplay as Fluttershy? No, sorry, sorry, not Fluttershy, but Spitfire. My goodness, I can speak. <laughs> well, actually, um, I would love to cosplay as Spitfire. Um, mm. And actually, there are plans Ooh. on it. I might have just been starting to get my ensemble Ooh. ready for it. Ooh. But I have no idea when I'm going to do it. Well, October 31st is coming. Oh yeah, but I want to say cosplay Spitfire for for mm. the the best timing ever. It has to be a very good timing. Uh, yeah. I guess when you when you saw Tara Strong cosplaying as Twilight <laughs> Sparkle, you all guys went like, "Oh my god, she cosplayed as her character." Now we all have to do it. <laughs> no, no, not that. I was like, "Oh, she 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 cosplays her own character." Now I totally want to do it. It was more the feeling I had. That's so awesome. It's like, oh, why didn't I think of this? Ah, because it's extra fun. I mean, I love to dress up, but it's extra fun to, to dress up as someone that, that you play. That's, that's... that's so... Talk, talking about that, because um, in the recent San Diego Comic Con, uh, Hugh Jackman, he dresses up as Wolverine. Oh my God, really? Yeah. And nobody is... recognized him. I didn't know him. that. Nobody recognized him. That's very cool. Oh. <laughs> that means he was a good cosplayer. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's that awesome. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. Uh, he's, now that I think about it, he's not the only one. Not is that as strong. Um, Steve Carell cosplayed as uh, Gru from uh, The Speakable Me. Mm-hmm. And, and I think the, uh, it was Andrew Garfield. He cosplayed as a Spider-Man. <laughs> no, he's and, Peter and Parker. Co- he's, he's, he cosplayed as Peter Parker. Uh, no, no, no. He cosplayed as a spider. He was dressed. There was a guy dressed as Spider Man in the in the in last year's San Diego Comic Con. Oh. So he was like, "Oh my God, wait a minute! I need to take off the mask. It's very hot in here." He takes off the mask, and it's Andrew Garfield, <laughs> the guy who played Spider Man in the in the newest Spider Man movie. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, that's much better." And uh, there was this um, this uh, who was it? Um, Oh yeah, the the voice actors who this the, the voice actors who did who did the voice of Colhoun in Wreck It Ralph, she cosplayed <laughs> as Colhoun in in uh, in Ellen De, in the Ellen DeGeneres show actually. Oh. Yeah. yeah. This is so much fun. Like, I think the only people that can pull off or do crazy things are voice actors because um, they're not that well known. So you know what? Let's do something crazy so people will know us. <laughs> uh so I, I I have one more question, and this one is just pure curiosity, and um, it, it, it has a build-up to it. So uh, I have a Tumblr, uh, which uh, it, it's a pony Tumblr, and it stars uh, a pony character whose name is Movie Slate, and she reviews movies. And from time to time, I have cameos made by other characters. So all this interview, I wanted to ask, what's your favorite movie, and if... You'd be okay with me drawing either... If you have an OC, I will draw your OC on the update for that movie, or I will draw whatever character you do the voice of. Oh, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Well, my favorite movie... Oh, there's so many movies, but um, I like comedies. No, (laughs) Surprising. Which one? Um, Which one? It got cut off. Oh, oh, comedies. Just uh, comedies in general. Uh, but I like, uh, I really like uh, <laughs> A Night at the Roxbury. You know that one? No, actually. Oh, wow. No, that one is obscure. I... Uh... Oh, it's Sweden. No, <laughs> no, oh, no it's, it's, a, it's an American movie. And um, I, I like that one. So, uh, A Night at the Roxbury. And I can't remember the name of the guy. It's, it's, it's actually a spinoff from Saturday Night Live. So... Um, there, gotcha. It's about two brothers who wants to be at the certain certain party club and they can't get in. So Ooh, it's, these it's two like guys. Much. Yeah. You know what? I haven't watched it. Karel, I'm, I'm going to wa- I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it and then I'm going to see what I can do with the with the update. What what character would you want to have in the in it? Or if you have an OC, I will do your OC. Or um well um. 
my OC is Swayfire. She's called Swayfire. And it's, um, she's yellow. And if you just, I think, I think you'll, you'll see her if you Google it. And I think yeah. that that officially concludes my round of questions. Well, I'll just try and think of something and then we can try and end this because I'm losing at a game bad right now. Hmm. Norman, you've been losing at games the entire stream. Don't, don't fool have, yourself. I have to tell <laughs> everyone about what I picked up in in America. Oh, please do. Yes. Oh, yes, because, because you, you've been you've been coughing the whole interview. Yes, like, yes, uh, I've been coughing. What, what <laughs> uh, I actually I went to Derbycon South in New Orleans, and I sort of picked up this oh. really exciting thing. It was an American cold. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> so I got a real bad cold, but now I'm better. But I still cough a bit, so that's why. It so has the doctor been? No, has your local doctor found out the <laughs> cure for it? No, no. It, it was easy to just say. It took me a week, and I mean, it was nothing. I think it was all the all the air condition. It was really nice weather there, you know, really hot and nice. And then inside, it was kind of cold, so I think that's why. But but by the way, I had a lovely time at Arctic South, and. The people, the food, the weather, everything was just amazing. Out of all the souvenirs that you could have picked in the U.S., uh, like a, a, a snow globe or a keychain or a postcard, no, you have to pick the American cold. Oh, wow. I experienced that. <laughs> that uh, the American cold and a fantastic little plushie, or kind of big plushie, actually, of Spitfire I got. And it was, I mean, I have it right here. Oh man, I wish I'd have a webcam right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I wish you could see it. But again, I, there will be a picture. I will post pictures uh, on my Facebook fan page later on. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's from Cutie Coral. Ooh. Uh, and he made it. Um, it. It was actually in my in my hand baggage when I when I traveled by plane because I was like, no, if they lose my bag, they will. It was my first big plushie, and they, that just couldn't happen. So. I had her in my hand as a little dog with her head up. Oh, that is adorable. Yes, it was. <laughs> Did they look weird at you? Like, oh god, that's a grown-up woman no. wearing a pony plush. <laughs> I don't. I don't think they did. And if they did, I would just like no. <laughs> no, I know. Straight, I'm like, yeah. Haven't you seen it before? <laughs> they were jealous. They were like, I want a one. I want yeah. a one. <laughs> I want one. Actually, there was a couple of kids looking like, oh, what you got there? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> no. Mine. Yeah, I have a plus and you don't. Mm-mm. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> oh, so finally, um, I do have a request quest right now. Um, I hope you can fulfill it. It's basically could you tell the people to help me in this 25 hour gaming stream? Of course. Uh, people, listen up. You have to help Norman in this 25 hours live stream when he is playing computer games on the internet just for charity. Mm-hmm. Just for charity. For charity! Woo! Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> There, there'll be I a link. Be there, there'll be a link somewhere. It's no problem. There'll be a link somewhere where I'll tell them where to go. And I hope James, you can help me <laughs> be there. I or... will. I will. Don't worry. I will make everybody feel guilty. If you don't donate money to Norman, you are the devil. <laughs> <laughs> I can say one more. I, I can do one more. Okay. <laughs> okay. Watch Norman Sanso play video games for twenty-five hours straight. Just. Don't miss it. It's for charity. Woohoo! That sounds awesome. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> but I think that's about the question I have because I can't think of anyone right now. Well, I I do have a statement, but um, I have a few friends that watch the the the, the special shop, and I think they'll be happy to know that you voice one of the characters. Oh well, Aww. yeah, yeah. I I think they'll be happy that, to know that you voice one of the characters and. Oh boy, would they be happy if they can find it? <laughs> yeah, I want to find it too. I haven't seen anything. Uh, I mean, I, I have seen it on on TV, but I haven't seen anything, mm, true, uh, true. anything ooh, like ooh. discuss a discussion or anything about it. I want to hear what people think. I just I just came up with another question right on, on the fly. I can't... Just needs everything. Yeah. 
Although it's, it's rather redundant because we know that you have that Spitfire plushie, but do you have uh, toys or figurines of other characters that you've voiced? Oh. Not just in, in Pony, but in like every other thing. Actually, I got three shelves of toys because wow. I buy every each, each and every character I voice, I buy. And it's, <laughs> it's gotten That's really. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, oh, um, some, some of them are kind of expensive. So I'm like, oh. And I bought a real big RC figurine, a real big one uh, from Transformers Prime. And I got, um, I got Barbie's best friend, Summer. Who, I'm Barbie in Life in a Dream House. I'm a friend there. And all of the Monster High girls that I was, I, I like buy them all. So <laughs> I have three shelves full, filled with ponies and Barbies and Monster High and Tigresses and Oh, what not dinosaur train stuff then, you know, <laughs> so much things. You know, it. you know, RC is my favorite character in Transformers Prime. It's awesome that you voice her. Woo. Yeah, she is <laughs> um, cool. So, so when people ask you what voices have you made, like when you have to present your resume, you just bring them to your house and you show them the shelf of toys. <laughs> you're like, Actually, this. I can just take a picture of it in the hair. Do you recognize any of those? No, just kidding. No. I voice no, all of I... these. <laughs> Here. <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> but it's so funny because pe- people know what, what, what I do when they, when, when they come home, come home to me, they, they, they usually know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> uh, but it would be funny if like, oh, ta-da! And they're like, okay, those are toys. Why are they not in your daughter's room? Why are they here? <laughs> Can I voice them? Voice them all! <laughs> Yay! Yay! Oh my god, did you ever like take them and do the voices and have conversations <laughs> with him? If I was a voice actor, I would be doing that all day. <laughs> it, it had happened. <laughs> yes. It, I it happened. And it will happen again. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Why did I say that? Oh, if, if, it wasn't, if it wasn't so many copyright laws, I'd say make videos of it and post them on the internet. People will love those. <laughs> oh, um, well, maybe uh, sometimes. Here's, here's the yeah, question I have: um, You voice a lot of cartoons, but have you any? Have you voiced any animes before? Yeah, I did Monsuno World Master, that one, and uh, Legend of Korra. Oh, yes. oh. Legend in of Legend Korra. of Korra, I'm um, That's me. I'm Astami Sato and uh, Jinora <gasps> and some others. Wow, you're playing a big role. Yes, it's a very good show as well. So I'm really happy to be in that one. I'm happy uh, to be in all, in all I do, but you have you have your favorites. Well, I kind of like uh, Asami Sato. Mm. Like, uh, Korra now in season two, she's no fun anymore. Oh. Spoilers! I want to watch oh, it! Spoilers! No. Spoilers! No, it's, it's not that. It's her attitude. She... No, Norman, shut, shut up before I <laughs> shut you up. Don't say anything. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Well, then we have to see if Basami tells her off or something. <laughs> oh, I, I, I won't so. say anything. I know stuff. I won't say anything. <laughs> but um, uh, talk, talking oh, about your favorite okay. shows, I mean, I mean, I like everything I do when I come into the studio. I mean, every show has their charm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, The Ponies and Little Pet Shop and Legend of Korra. I think those are my three. Like when they call and it's about that, it's 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 like yeah. Well, they are good quality shows, of course. It's true, because yeah. here's the thing that is running in my head. Because back in the days, even with the internet, nobody knows or nobody really cares about the voice actor that played the role. They just only like the character. They don't go beyond the role. Yeah, that is that is true. Uh, Tara Strong said that there are so many people coming at her saying, Oh my God, you voiced my childhood. <laughs> uh, because back then, people didn't bother to, fi- to find out who was doing the voice of who. They they were just looking at the at the, uh, at the yeah. cartoons. Well, actually, in Sweden, I, I always try to see who did who. And I started to recognize people's voices. And I was such a little dubbing nerd. Because uh, <laughs> I was like, I watched the, the after the, oh, you know, the, the credits. Mm-hmm. And I sort of like, okay, so that must be her. And then I heard the same person in another dub. And I was like, okay, that's her again. And then I, could, I, I learned it. So I knew, I knew who, who 
who who did voice who. And I was kind of sometimes I got like a bit angry because I'm like, no, she shouldn't voice that character. She's in that show. She can't do that. That's not right with the same voice. I mean, she could like try to do another voice in this show, but no, she's just the same voice now. That's not right. And I was like ranting and raving about it. And people were like, why are you so interested in the dubs? And I was like eight or nine. So I was like, so. Mm. Oh, so, oh, so, that was like, okay, not to reveal your age or anything, but that was like, they had credits for uh, the voice (laughs) actors, they had credits for the voice actors in in Sweden, in, oh, wow, you know, this is the contrast with Spain. At least in the the movie, so on uh, VHS, you know, that old format. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, oh, that old format. I, 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 yeah. Believe me, I was alive when beta was still going, so <laughs> I'm old too. I'm, I'm an old guy, but um, I just say that because not until recently, like five or four or five years ago, uh, they didn't have credits for uh, Spanish dub actors in Spain. It wasn't until very recently that, by law, every single movie has to have, at the very end credits, it has to have uh, a credits late. It's saying what character was voiced by who in, oh. and in, in, yeah, it's like, not until recently they have been doing that. And I was like, that is so, again, it's unfair to the voice actors in this country because people here have, they, yeah, they, they, I mean, like, uh, put their souls in it. And, and I mean, the least thing, I mean, it's really nice when you get credited because, uh, in Sweden, we, it doesn't say who does that and that character. It's just a bunch of names. But people who really want to find out, they they, they found out, uh, they they find out uh, by themselves. But I mean, it's just a bunch of names. But uh, on some sh- um, uh, in some channels, there are no names. So it's it's that's too bad. I think they they should have our names there. Here's the thing that I also noticed is that um, people right now, or people in this modern day and age, um, people who want to know um, who played what role, for example, Spitfire, they just go to the of- not really the official, but the fan wiki page. Mm. They click on the name, they click on the sidebar, and who voices this role? Like, oh, and he does the Sp- Spanish dub, and um, Makaya Hendricks does the English dubs, and oh, this is really fun and interesting. Like, finding people, it's really easy now. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and and you have to be careful because there are also some uh, some misunderstandings that can, that can happen. Uh, um, like last year in Everfree Northwest 2012, Ooh. Andrew Francis uh, he was uh, he was mistaken to be the voice actor for Braeburn, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, Applejack's cousin in Appaloosa, yeah. and they find out that it wasn't him who voiced Braeburn. It was uh, another voice actor called uh, uh, Robert Dangerfield, I think it was. Mm-hmm. People are going to correct me on the stream. It's not. It's something Dangerfield. Let so it's like you have to be careful to. Thank you. To who is credited for it because misunderstandings can happen. And this is going to sound terrible, but sometimes voices can sound similar if you don't have a sharp ear. Mm. And the name is Michael. Michael Dangerfield. Thank you. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. I'm I'm sorry. I'm so embarrassed. I got the name. Oh, (laughs) don't be. I I was like, Michael Dangerfield, don't you know that? (laughs) I got that. No. <laughs> that, that's the thing also because uh, okay with the English dub okay with uh, for for example um, Andrew Francis in situation he auditioned for the role just that once so he didn't know he got it or not yeah that is true he did audition for the role and uh, in the end he didn't get it I think it was both misunderstanding from uh, from him and from us it was a combined effort to make a misunderstanding <laughs> combined <laughs> oh boy. No, but I'm looking at the list here for voice actors now. Like it's easy. Like you, you can look at the names of who, uh, what actor did what voice. Hey, here's another question. Since we're, well, since I'm playing a lot of games right now, um, are you playing any games right now, or do you have any portable systems that you have? Um, no, not right now. I'm singing in, you know. Like karaoke games and stuff like oh. that. Uh, I do a lot of that. And I actually, I yes, I tried my little karaoke a couple of times. Oh, yes, awesome. Mm-hmm. 
So how was it? Um, it was I, nice. It was so much fun. But I mean, no one else <laughs> of my friends or family knows the song. So I'm like, come on, this song and this song. Oh, this is great. And they're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So I have a lot of fun. And they, they, they stand beside me and watch me have fun. <laughs> I'm like, you can have candy. I can have this. <laughs> and then I have some candy. Give me your candy. <laughs> I do play... Um, I do play that once and it was so fun but it's kind of lost on me because it's more fun if I can fight with someone. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I, I want to go to like a karaoke brownie party. That would be cool. Actually, I sang some karaoke at Galakan this summer. Oh, okay, just one thing. Uh, do you know what's the reaction for the Swedish brownies or Swedish people who just watch the show and don't go out of their way to look for additional information about the show? Oh, no, um, because I think people that just watch the show and don't look for more information are not that active uh, on the Internet. So um, I have no idea. But uh, um, no, but no. <laughs> no, it's, that's too bad because I would like to hear what they think about the show or your performance mm. or anybody's performance. Yeah, but I, I know that that people that are active... Um, they weren't that happy with season one, uh, but then they got more happy about it on season two. And I mean, there there's always people who don't like the show in Swedish, and there are always people who like the show in Swedish. Mm. So, uh, and I've got I've gotten a lot of very sweet mails emails about about what mm-hmm. they think, and uh, I can never get enough of those. I mean, it's, it's so nice to hear that people appreciate what you're doing. It's really nice. You know, kind of related to um, uh, to voice acting. Oh, well, I just can't believe these questions keep coming up, and this is going to sound like a very uh, jumbled mess of an interview. So, Norman, you have to do a good job of, of putting all the questions regarding voice acting together, and then everything else. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I just then going to think, leave it as it is. <laughs> oh my God, that's going to be a disaster. <laughs> but no, okay. Um, so, besides the English dub, uh, have you checked any other dubs that have been released in Europe? Um, like yes. the German, the French. Ooh. Oh yes, I, I've been looking at the uh, before the the comparison uh, videos came. I was just checking in and seeing how it was because I I like to do that on uh, on a lot of shows that I do because I really oh. want to hear how the casting worked and how the casting process. And I want to see how at first I want to see. Uh, I mean, I, I hear the original when I'm dubbing it, but then I want to see. Okay, so did they? pick a girl that sounds similar to me in the German version or in the Norwegian version. So I really, I think that's really nice to, to hear. And sometimes it's really like, wow, that's, it really sounds like me or like the original. It's, it's, it's real, that's really cool when they find the same like person who sounds, I mean, not the same person, but you know, the same, the same type of voice. That's really cool. And sometimes like, what did they think now? <laughs> but I mean, Be- it's so funny. Yeah. Uh- because the reason why I asked that is that I don't think I think it was in the Dan, Danish version or in the uh, the Dutch version. I think it was one version where Spitfire was, was voiced a by yes. a man. Yes, yeah. he was a, it was a man character. Yeah, it was in a. Oh, it was that. Was it Brazil? Yeah, it's the. No, I think it was actually. I think yeah, it was Denmark it was, or the uh, or Deutschland. No, not Denmark. Uh, not Deutschland. Uh, it was. I think it was. Wasn't it like Hungary or something like that? Hmm. I, it was Hungary. Brazil. Maybe it was him. Yeah. Oh, well, well, oh, it was, well, it was, sure not, it was not Denmark and not Germany. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yep, I heard it. I saw it. Yeah, yeah it was kind I, of I weird. It. All of a sudden, she starts talking with these very deep boys, and I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. That's an interpretation that means- of the character that's unique. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, you remember the pony blind bag with the cards? The, oh, the, yeah, the, yeah. Ah, yeah. Like yes. Spitfire's card. Uh, so at least yeah, they are, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the only one that makes sense. <laughs> uh, canon somewhere else. No, but still, <laughs> this is interesting. Never mind. So I, I think um, it's time for them to hear me reach at the game again. So, Enli, thank you for coming or for doing this um, pre-recorded interview with us, and I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Oh, thank you. It was really nice to be here, and good luck with your gaming. Yes, thank you. And it's all for a good cause. It's for the Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. So I hope you guys can, well, uh, spare yeah, a few bucks. Yep, yep. Spare a few give your money, the- guys. Yeah, and if you cannot give your money, so spread this around. Tell everybody. Bring people in. Because even if you have, uh, post it on Twitter. And if you have five followers, it doesn't matter. Post it anyway. 
like signal boost this, okay? Spread it around. True, 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 true. And true, I hope Emily, you can also kind of tweet it, <laughs> if possible. Of course, yes. Thank you. I will not be here that day. I will be out of computer range that day, but I will. I will make sure that I will Twitter it out just a couple uh, of days before I travel. All right. Thank you a lot, Emily. Yeah, good idea. Even if you cannot tweet it like uh, in the same day it's happening, tweet it before it happens so people get mm. ready. You know what? That's even better. People will get prepared. They will get ready, and they'll save money. <laughs> yeah, just send me the link uh, so I can post a link as well. So. Alrighty so. then, so I'll post in the link and also I post it in the game stream or whatever I'm doing right now. So anyway, um, thank you, Emily, and um, <laughs> th thanks a lot. And one more bye thing bye. I wanted to show you before uh, before you leave. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, don't leave yet. I'm I'm here. Something. One, I'm here. one thing before you leave. <laughs> Uh, that's one thing that that's something that uh, one of my clients asked me to draw. That is a best pony logo theme on Spitfire. Oh, <laughs> I think I saw this a couple of days ago. Yeah, with the tail. Oh my god! Uh -huh. Yes, yes I did. That, yes. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> I did cool. a bunch. Uh, oh, I I, wow. I kind of came up with that. Part. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but I is like yeah. That, there you go. And I mean, just was wondering if you said you saw this already. Oh my god! Yes. I saw it like two days ago ago or something. And I don't know how it's... I found it, but I did because I remember the tail going out of the Y. And I was like, that's clever. Oh my God. Thank you. I think I need to go into, into a cloud right now and, and jump up and down in happiness for a couple well, it's of days. Pink and, fluffy, and then it will come down. It, it is pink and fluffy and it rains chocolate, so it's, it's good. Uh, so anyway, um, I think we leave you back to our regular program of me reaching at the game. So, okay. Bye, guys. Bye.